Laser guided bombing in the Hornet provides pinpoint accuracy with a high degree of flexibility, delivering desired weapons effect with ease. Crucial for strike missions where high accuracy is required, laser guided bombing allows rapid and accurate weapon delivery, effective against even armoured and reinforced targets. In this episode we will take a look at employing the Paveway 2 and 3 series of laser guided bombs against a variety of different targets. Let's get started. Capable of carrying up to 8 GBU-12 Paveway 2 laser guided bombs, the Hornet is a lethal strike platform that can be deployed against a variety of different targets. Mission sets that benefit from using laser guided weapons include air interdiction, which is the targeted destruction of key enemy infrastructure to slow opposing forces, close air support, and offensive counter air, which includes suppression and destruction of enemy air defences. Laser guided bombs are general purpose bombs that have been fitted with a computer control group, guidance canards and a wing assembly attached to the aft section. They are unpowered but manoeuvrable freefall weapons that use a semi-active guidance system to detect and track a target designation laser energy spot. This laser can be fired from either the host aircraft, another aircraft also called buddy lasing, or a ground based unit. These ground units are called a Joint Terminal Attack Controller in the US or a Forward Air Controller in the UK. In DCS World we have access to the Paveway 2 and Paveway 3 series of laser guided bombs, with the Paveway 3 being the more advanced series. The naming convention for laser guided bombs is GBU and then a number, with GBU standing for Guided Bomb Unit. The GBU-12, GBU-16 and GBU-10 are the three Paveway 2 weapons available, based on the Mark 82, Mark 83 and Mark 84 general purpose bombs respectively. The GBU-24 is the only Paveway 3 weapon available in DCS World, also based on the Mark 84 general purpose bomb. These weapons are the 500 pound, 1000 pound and 2000 pound class of weapons, each with a tritonol blast fragmentation warhead. The Paveway 3 series offers increased glide performance and greater accuracy due to the inclusion of a proportional guidance system where control fins are actuated progressively. This is in contrast to the bang bang style guidance used in the Paveway 2 where the guidance canards always actuate fully to their control limits. Due to this, the cost of a Paveway 3 weapon is approximately twice that of a Paveway 2 and as such is used on high value targets only. Employing Paveway 2 laser guided bombs can be done using a number of different methods. The most common method is releasing the weapon in auto mode, where the aircraft is flown straight and level towards the target area. The flight computer will calculate the timing for the release point and automatically release the bomb when holding the weapon release button. This delivery method is called Continuously Computed Release Point or CCRP. Before using auto mode, a target must first be designated as a sensor point of interest or SPI. This allows the flight computer to calculate the release point and steering cues. SPIs can be designated in seven different ways. The first way is using the helmet mounted display. Select air to ground mode, turn on the HMD and press sensor control switch forward to enable the crosshair. Place the crosshair over the target and depress the TDC to designate it as the SPI. To use the heads up display a weapon must first be selected on the stores management page. Sensor control switch forward will enable the ball and chain symbol consisting of a dotted line and a reticule. The reticule is then placed over the target and TDC depressed will designate it as the SPI. Alternatively, the velocity vector can be flown over the reticule which will merge the two symbols, used to designate an SPI with TDC depress. Both mission set and manually set waypoints can be designated as sensor point of interests using the waypoint designate button. The pilot body is hidden using right control and P and backspace hides the control column. Pressing mode then map hides the map on the HSI. When the desired waypoint has been selected, waypoint designate can be pushed to set it as a sense point of interest. And selecting target undesignates. Once an unused waypoint has been selected, 
clicking UFC allows you to input the position data using the precise mode. Select position, then north to input latitude in degrees and minutes. Then press enter. The decimal places are then inputted as thousandths of a minute indicated by TTHO. West or east is then selected to input longitude in the same way. Elevation is then inputted for the target elevation in feet. MGRS or Military Grid Reference System coordinates are inputted using the grid option on the UFC. The required grid square is then selected by slewing the TDC and depressing it when over the correct square. The 10 digit numerical location is then inputted on the UFC giving a precision level of 1 meter. The elevation of the target in feet is then inputted as before. Once the waypoint data has been inputted, the waypoint designate push button is pressed to designate the waypoint as the SPI. Mark points can be used to quickly save the location of a target area and are created on the HSI by pressing Mark 1. Overflying the intended target and depressing Mark 1 will save the ground location under the aircraft into Mark Point 1. By cycling the selected waypoint below waypoint 0, the Mark Points 1 to 9 can be selected and designated using the Waypoint Designate Push button. If a sensor point of interest has already been designated before selecting the mark point button, the current SPI will be saved as a mark point. This is very useful for saving up to 9 target locations which can then be easily selected and cycled through. The final method of designating an SPI is by using a TV FLIR targeting pod such as the Lightning 2. The FLIR format page is selected from the tactical menu. If an SPI has been designated, the targeting pod will automatically slew its line of sight onto the SPI. The FLIR mode is entered by selecting CCD or by holding the RAID FLIR FOV button on the throttle grip. The throttle designator controller or TDC commands the slewing of the pod while TDC depress will designate the SPI to the point under the reticule. The radar elevation control smoothly zooms the view in and out. Selecting sensor control switch in the direction of the FLIR page will enter area track and point track modes. These modes will inhibit further slewing of the pod. Selecting undesignate slash nose wheel steering on the stick will undesignate the currently set SPI and double tapping it will enter velocity vector slave mode. This allows the velocity vector to be visually placed over a target before Altitude. selecting TDC to press. Additionally, snowplow mode sets the targeting pod without ground stabilization, so if a target becomes visible, it can be selected using TDC to press. This is particularly useful for passive target recognition when flying in unknown territory. Now that we have designated the target as a sensor point of interest, we can set up our weapon of choice. In the stores page, GBUs 12, 16 and 10 are each represented by their corresponding general purpose bomb. The mark number of the bomb is followed by LG for laser guided. For example, 82LG denotes a GBU-12, which is a laser guided Mark 82. The Paveway 3 weapons are denoted by GB-24 for GBU-24. The laser PRF code for each weapon can either be set individually or all together. Without a weapon selected, pressing code then entering a PRF code will set it for all laser guided bombs identified. When a weapon is selected, code will change the PRF identifier for that weapon station only. Once the laser code is set, the release mode is set to auto and the electronic fuse is set to instantaneous. The laser guided bomb is now armed and ready for use. Once the target has been positively identified using the targeting pod, the laser target designator slash ranging switch can be set to arm. The boxing trig on the FLIR page enables manual firing of the designation laser. The aircraft is then flown to place a velocity vector over the azimuth steering line whilst monitoring the time to release counter on the heads up display. 
As this timer reaches 5 seconds, hold the weapon release button to commit to dropping the bomb. The release cue will then pass through the velocity vector and the weapon will be released. The laser will automatically fire 10 seconds before calculated time of impact and can be manually fired with the trigger. This is displayed with a flashing LTD slash R on both the HUD and FLIR page. When time to impact reaches zero, monitor the FLIR page to positively identify design weapons effect. Moving targets are designated by placing the crosshair in the vehicle's track and entering point track mode. As the vehicle passes through the reticule, it will automatically acquire a track and will slew to keep the target centred. This is suited towards slow moving targets such as tanks and armoured fighting vehicles, as fast moving vehicles present difficulty when tracking. Ground moving target mode in the air to ground radar also allows the detection of moving ground targets. Tracks can be designated using the sense control switch in the direction of the air to ground radar page. These tracks can then be analysed using the targeting pod and tracked using the FLIR camera. Laser guided bombs manoeuvre to place the laser spot in the centre of their seeker's field of view, allowing them to track moving targets with ease. Poveway 3 weapons can be employed in either pre-planned or straight line attack modes. The flight computer will calculate a computed launch acceptable region, or CLA, denoted by an orange region in pre-planned mode and a green region in straight line mode. Weapon setup is much the same. Select Master Arm Arm, Air to Ground Mode and select the GBU-24. Select CLAR SL as the mode and select Mechanical Fuse to Tail. Enter the PRF code on the UFC and the weapon is now ready to use. Select the FLIR and ensure that the target is under the crosshair. Arm the laser and fly the aircraft into the computed launch acceptable. Wait for the range indicator to reach the maximum range queue and hold the weapon release button. The bomb will drop as the dot passes through the velocity vector. The laser will begin firing as soon as the weapon releases to provide immediate tracking data. That concludes this episode on laser guided bombing in the DCS FA-18C Hornet. It is a very useful skill when learning to fly in DCS as many multiplayer servers rely on it. Give it a practice in single player to hone your skills and then give it a shot in multiplayer. I hope you have enjoyed this video and have learned something new. Be sure to check out my full guide on the Lightning 2 targeting pod to learn about the symbology and the way it is used against aerial and ground targets. Fly safe.